Another letter. My main worry was the danger of injury, particularly to the breast. I felt that ladies would catch the ball into the chest rather than over their heads and that this constant trauma from a heavy football might have serious effect on breast tissue, even causing cancer. I would be reluctant to give my own daughter permission to play. Mm. What about that? Catch the ball when it's coming down there and you've no fears. <laughs> <laughs> Do, do you, I mean, are people concerned about about the dangers for you? I don't There's no real so. danger, though. Like, it's all right for me. That's just an excuse. If you want to hand you an excuse, it's a good one to give, all right. There's only one other girl on the team, and that's all we really talk to. I'm Heidi and I'm 13. The first couple of years that I played, I was, I feel like it was wild easy. And sometimes we had to like take players off the pitch because there was like barely any people. But now there's like so much players, the dugouts are filled and everything. And sometimes you get soaked because there's not enough room in the dugouts. And Josie, have you been playing on the junior team or have you been playing the senior team? And both. And both. Yes. Are you currently playing? Well, I was suspended last year. <laughs> oh, you were suspended? What did they suspend you for? Hitting a woman. <laughs> oh, you didn't, did you, Josie? I thought they were all very nice girls here in, in Wexford. Why aren't women full members of golf clubs? Well, I really honestly don't know, except that maybe that years ago when golf first started, was started by men, for men. Women didn't play many games in those days, and I think they probably have just kept the status quo. Women didn't play golf, and it has never changed. But I think it will change, I do. It must change, and it will. Sydney 2000, that was the one that a lot of people talk about when they say that was the first time they'd seen a woman achieve in sport. Winning an Olympic medal is too high of a bar. Women have had to achieve something monumental in order to warrant that kind of attention. Boxing is the last Olympic sport. Women's sport was so in the shadows in Ireland then again until Katie Taylor. Again, when we think Katie, it's winning her Olympic gold. Now she'd won five world championships before that. She had to literally put women's boxing in the Olympics herself. And then she went and won gold. It took the Irish women putting themselves in a position to win a Grand Slam in 2013 to have their first match ever televised. The two landmark matches of that year were when they beat England and France in Ashburn, which they had never done before. They were the big knights in that Grand Slam journey and nobody saw them. And that's the big cultural difference for me. We blindly follow men's sports teams in green jerseys. No matter how many medals they win or don't win. It's absolutely unbelievable. I think the best example is the reaction to what the women's hockey team did in the World Cup in 2019. When you talk about punching above your weight, achieving beyond all expectation, they went into that tournament ranked 15th out of the 16 teams in it and they got to the final. Women just have to achieve ridiculous levels of achievement in order to get basic levels of respect. Look, I said a long time ago, I, I, I believed in the power of jumping on the bandwagon of success in sport. And, and we had it, we had the best example of it ever is, is the success of, of international soccer and what happened with the Jack Charlton era in the 80s and, and, and 90s. Something fundamentally changed in our psyche with the delivery of the men's soccer team into a major tournament where the whole nation got behind them. Something that no one can quite put their finger on or name happened. If the Republic of Ireland women's football team qualify for a major tournament, everything changes. But you have to give them the ability to be successful. That's the fear that they won't give them the, the base levels to be successful. 
it was 29 years ago when we had the first Women's World Cup, whereas it was 90 years ago when we had the men's, uh, the first Men's World Cup. So, you know, that's where you get massive historic inequalities. I normally do a Cristiano Ronaldo celebration. It's where he runs to the corner, turns around and then goes... I'm Katie and I'm 14. They put the Women's World Cup on the TV, which made a big improvement on it. I think it was the first time I saw a woman, like soccer player, on the front cover of a newspaper. And I was like, oh my, I was, I was thinking I was the back of the newspaper. But then I looked and I was like, page one, front cover. I was like, what? It meant a lot to me. If the women want to get 80,000 at All Ireland final, they have to come at it a different way. Men's tickets are based on demand, but that demand is based on the exposure that the men's game and the investment the men's game has gotten over 100 years in Gaelic games. Equality for me is not going to be got by just shouting for equality. Equity means about ensuring that whatever person needs, that they get it to achieve the equality. What do women need to get to the level at men at the moment? What does that investment look like? So the NGBs, the clubs, the schools, the media, the government, the commercial and the public, if you call those your seven stakeholders of sports industry. It still feels to me that the media has a disproportionate role to play in that because the media and the coverage of the games is the glue that binds all those stakeholders together. Media and people who work in media need to recognize the importance and crucially the power that they have. Why are you rugby? Why any sport? <laughs> Great to see an Irish international women's rugby team. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I think it may be triple crown or something like that. <laughs> That's probably a fairly far-fetched idea now at the moment, but maybe within a few years. The thing to do with women's sport is the exact same thing that you do with men's sport, is you put them under lights on a Friday night, and then eventually, if they're not entertaining, if they're not good enough, they lose that slot. But you've got to give them this slot and then promote it the hell around them. Irish rugby became really successful off the back of Tommen Park on a Friday night. So many people who had no interest in rugby were like, this is my social life now. Is there a difference between the men's and the women's football, say, in terms of finances? Oh yeah, there's a big difference. Yeah, we, we uh, the, the ladies, well, at Club Bank County level, they have practically no money, you know, unless what they make your raffles and, and things like that. And uh, they're dependent on, on some of the girls and other people, officials, to cart them round to games, you know. Mm. Would, uh, would the men have their own cars and that? Oh, well, they would, and, and the, the men gets, like, the men gets travelling expenses, both to go to training and to matches. They, they, are, they all get travelling expenses, you know, and a good meal after, a feed of steak and all the rest, you know. But, uh, and the women? Oh, no, unless the day they all Ireland, they might have, they would have a meal, all right, you know, chicken and chips or something, it's all they could afford. Just in terms of the pandemic and the choices that are going to be made now are going to be financial choices that are going to be brutal. I fear they're going to be really damaging for women's sport because everyone is in a survival mode. No one has come out in a political level or in a position of authority and said, we're not going to let this happen. Yeah, they always go like, oh, you're only girls, you aren't fast, you aren't tough and all. And like, we're actually quite tough. I'm quite a tough person. My name's Ava and I'm 13. I see more women's actual matches on telly. Like, I watch more women's matches now. I can name more women in sport. It was like after a game and they came up to me and they were like, oh, we, um, we take back what we said about you to be in week. I was like, guy, he just walked away. You look at some of the profiles of elite female athletes that weren't there two years ago that are there now, and you say, that's fantastic progress. But is it equal to where 
men's sport is? The answer is, in just about every aspect, no. Does it have the potential to get there? Over time, yes. But all the blocks that have been put in place now need to be built upon. And that's down to each and every individual person who's involved in the sports industry to ensure that that foundation is built upon.